In today's video, I'm finally going to talk about the Ryzen 7 9800X3D processor, and this is AMD's latest addition to their 9000 series lineup. I also think it is safe to say that this is pretty much the best gaming CPU that you can get at the moment. So for this video, uh, we tested 40 different games on three different resolutions to see how well it actually performs, and most importantly, how it compares to Intel's newest edition, the Core Ultra 7 265K, that has had a uh, less successful launch earlier this month. So let's begin. The 9800X3D is the only Zen 5 X3D processor at the moment. Now some details of a higher core count Ryzen 9 9950 X3D are already leaking out here and there, but for now this 8 core 16 thread version is all we got from AMD this time around. On paper there is not a huge difference from the previous 7800X3D model. It has slightly higher clocks, a slightly improved process, and a slightly higher price. Uh, definitely not a large number of cores for your money if you compare it to Intel's closest competitor, the Core Ultra 7 265K. The memory specification has been increased as well, but I'm sure that everyone will be using even faster memory anyway, so that doesn't really make much of an actual difference. And it uses the same AM5 platform, which means that most current motherboards should be compatible with this latest CPU, assuming you update the BIOS. When it comes to performance, uh, I will be comparing this new X3D CPU to a its predecessor, the 7800X3D, as well as the Intel Core Ultra 7 uh, 265K. And just to make it clear, uh, even though I did the Ultra 7 review a few weeks ago, all the CPUs have been retested with the recent updates, uh, even though they only made a difference in a handful of titles. But as always, if you want to know a bit more about the exact specs of the systems I use for testing and all the testing conditions, uh, I will leave all the details in the description box down below. Now, if we look at a couple of standard CPU benchmarks, uh, the new 9800X3D is actually more than 25% faster than the 7800X3D when it comes to multi-threaded performance and more than 15% faster in the single-threaded benchmark. In a quick Blender render, it completed the test in 100 seconds compared to 134 with the 7800X3D. And in this test, the Ultra 7 is still pretty far ahead, but the new X3D definitely made a significant jump compared to the last gen 7800X3D. In a longer render, the time goes down from about 9 minutes to a bit under 8 minutes. And again, it's not really a match for the Ultra 7 CPU when it comes to pure CPU performance, but it is a significant step up and it makes the 9800X3D more attractive than the 7800X3D when it comes to uh, all those non-gaming tasks as well. But the 9800X3D does use a lot more power in the process, so it is technically less efficient than the 7800X3D, as well as the 9950X, though it is still more efficient than the Core Ultra 7 from Intel. But let's check out some games. Every time uh, we tested a bunch of games with the new CPUs, uh, you always had some games that favor AMD and then some games that favor Intel. But between the two latest processors from AMD and Intel, uh, the story kind of shifted a bit and now we have games that favor the 9800X3D a bit and games that favor it a lot. Only in Borderlands 3 at 1080p, the Core Ultra 7 managed to get a very slim win, with everything else favoring AMD to a different degree. Even in Formula 1 2023, which was one of the few games where the 265K beat the 7800X3D, the 9800X3D was ahead by almost 20%, with smaller but still significant improvements at 4040p and even 4K resolution. And there are a few games where they ended up fairly close, like the Spider-Man Remastered, for example, where the 9800X3D was ahead but not by a huge margin, and uh, it was the same in The Witcher 3, when again, AMD leads, but not by any significant amount. But in the majority of 40 titles we tested for this video, AMD was very comfortably in the lead. A Black Myth Wukong is a good example of that and very hard game to run, uh, with the new AMD being 15% faster on both 1080p and 1440p and about 10% ahead on 4K resolution as well. 
In Anno 1800, which does bounce between CPU and GPU limits depending on the scene, the 9800X3D ended up ahead by almost 40% on 1080p. And this is not really a game that benefits from 540Hz displays, but it is still a very impressive result. Far Cry 6 is a game that showed some pretty clear issues with the 265K at launch. So here, the 9800X3D is leading by more than 50% on 1080p, and even 1440p with a smaller but still significant lead at 4k resolution. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 9800X3D is ahead by about 50% on 1080p, 25% uh, on 1440p, and we ran into GPU limits at 4k resolution. While in Microsoft Flight Simulator, that can be both CPU and GPU limited depending on your setup, uh, the 9800X3D showed a lot more benefit compared to the Core Ultra 7. Now, if you already own a 7800X3D, it is not really worth upgrading it, uh, but I know that for a lot of you, uh, this is the only game you play, and for that use case, the 9800X3D is the best option at the moment. Now, as usual, I'm not going to talk about 40 different games individually, uh, so let's check out some summaries instead. On 1080p resolution, everything was running really well. Whichever game you throw at it, the CPU will run it easily on high refresh rate monitors. On 1440p, uh, some games will be GPU limited and some will be CPU limited, but again, most games will run well on high refresh rate monitors, assuming you have a high-end GPU to go with this CPU. On 4K resolution, you are generally GPU bound, but in my opinion, I still think it is very useful to see a large summary of what you can expect from this CPU when you combine it with a high-end GPU, because uh, even though it doesn't just show the full potential of this CPU alone, uh, you can still see that it can definitely make a difference in quite a few games on this resolution. And if we compare it to the 7800X3D, it is clear that the new AMD CPU offers a pretty significant improvement across the board. Now, there are a couple of games where there is no difference between them, and a couple of games with a difference so small that it doesn't really matter which one you're using, but there are also plenty of games where the 9800X3D is very far ahead. On average, we have a gap of about 11%, which is not bad for a generational improvement, and actually more than 8% AMD promised based on their own data. Even on 1440p, when we're slowly running into some GPU bottlenecks here and there, uh, there are still plenty of games where the new chip is ahead by 10% or more, and sometimes even more than that. And at 4K native resolution, we're now GPU bound in the majority of games, but still, uh, there are a few examples where just changing your CPU can improve the performance by more than just a couple of percent. And do remember that if you're gaming on a 4K monitor and using upscaling, which you probably should, uh, the internal rendering resolution is then 1080p or 1440p. So even with a 4K monitor, you will still experience bigger differences than what this graph will show. Now, if we compare the 9800X3D gaming data to the Core Ultra 7 265K, it just feels like you're comparing two products from a completely different era uh, and not from the same generation. Uh, Intel is holding on to that one tiny insignificant win, but AMD is leading by about 25% on average, with plenty of games showing the 9800X3D ahead by 50% or more. Even at native 1440p, there are still plenty of games where the AMD is ahead by a huge margin, while Intel doesn't even manage to win one single title. On 4K native, we have GPU limits in a lot more titles, so it definitely got a lot closer in some titles, but once again, uh, AMD still has a couple of games with a pretty significant lead. And assuming that you're going to use upscaling for some of the heavier titles, uh, the fact that the Intel can hit similar GPU limits at 4K resolution uh, isn't really much of an excuse. That being said, I do want to point out that Intel did acknowledge that the uh, gaming data we saw at launch and data we are seeing today is not exactly what they expected to see. So uh, they are supposedly working on pushing some updates in November or December uh, to improve 
gaming performance a little bit. But uh, looking at the gaps today, it is really hard to believe that they will manage to get anywhere close to the gaming performance of this 9800 X3D. Now, that extra performance does come with a significantly higher power consumption than the uh, 7800 X3D had. And if we look at Cyberpunk 2077, which stresses the CPU nicely, the 7800 X3D looks extremely efficient and it seems like AMD is letting the efficiency drop a bit in order to push some more performance. And with Intel improving their efficiency a lot, the gap is a bit smaller than before. But idle power consumption is still a topic with these new AMD CPUs. Now, if I look at the overall power consumption of my two test benches with a similar motherboard, memory, and peripherals, the Z890 rig used about 43 watts when idle compared to 65 watts for the AMD with similar differences during light use. So if you are someone who has their PC on all the time and you live somewhere where you pay a lot for your electricity, that difference can really add up. And I have to say it's a bit frustrating that this has been known for a while and nothing was really changed. So it is definitely something I wish uh, AMD would look into a bit more. So overall, the Ryzen 7 9800X3D is a very impressive product. And as I said at the start, it is the ultimate gaming CPU that you can get right now with Intel not offering a real alternative at the moment. Uh, the Core Ultra 7 is a more capable processor when it comes to other workloads and it has a lower idle power consumption, so I guess it might make some sense for some people, uh, depending on their use case and balance between work and play. But if you mostly care about gaming, AMD is so far ahead. Plus, it is not really lacking when it comes to general use either, uh, and it still offers more than enough performance for most applications people will use, and even creative ones. And there's some other benefits that AMD has as well, like using the same AM5 socket, so you can just use an older and much cheaper motherboard for it instead of having to buy a new expensive one uh, like you do with Intel's new processors. Now, if you already own a 7800X3D, I don't really think it's worth upgrading it, to be honest. And if you want even more raw performance, you can always wait a bit more to see how the 9950X3D will perform. But for a new gaming system right now, the Ryzen 7 9800X3D is the CPU to get assuming you can actually find one. So I managed to buy this one a couple of hours after it launched, but from what I understand, they're pretty much sold out in most regions, including here in the Netherlands, as well as the US. Now, some retailers even said that most of their incoming shipments for the coming weeks are already sold out as well. So if you really want to get this processor, it is not a bad idea to turn on notifications on all shops in your region, or even pre-order one, which is not something I often recommend. And I guess that alone should say plenty about this CPU. Anyway, this is all I have for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and for staying to the end of this video. I really hope it was helpful enough. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.